We have already talked about things you need to do as soon as you purchase a new Windows 10 PC in one of our previous videos, the link to which I'll include in the description or at the end of this video. But for now, let's talk about some essential software that you should install on every PC, uh, be it a new PC you have bought or an older one. Hey guys, this is Abhijit from Guiding Tech and let's get right to it. Securing your system with an antivirus should be your top priority as soon as you get a new Windows PC. And while Windows Defender does most of the basic stuff quite well, it isn't foolproof. So it's best if you have a second security software just to be sure. Malwarebytes is one of the best options that you can go for. With the free version, you can scan your system for all kinds of malware some of which the Windows Defender might not even be able to detect. And if you like the software, you can get the paid version, which includes additional features like anti-exploit security and scheduled scans. But if you don't want to spend the extra money, the free version is enough to keep you out of trouble. Its database is updated regularly and it doesn't show up annoying pop-ups asking you to buy the paid version, which a lot of such tools do. Now, once you've done your bit to protect your system from external threats, it's time to get some productivity software, uh, starting with an Office Suite. While there are chances that you already have Microsoft Office installed on your system, it's probably just the trial variant and you will have to spend some money to get that activated. If you're not willing to spend that extra buck, you can try out LibreOffice instead. It's a free and open source Office Suite that works quite well and has alternatives to Microsoft's Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and other software. It might not be as aesthetically pleasing as Microsoft Office, but it gets the job done. Next up, we have VLC, a free and open source media player that you should have because the stock media player in Windows is just bad. VLC is lightweight, includes support for a vast majority of formats, and it even includes support for a variety of plugins and codecs that greatly improve its functionality. For example, the VL sub plugin can be used to search and download subtitles right within the media player. Pretty cool, right? Speaking of downloading things, the Ninja Download Manager should also be on your list of downloads because, well, it helps you download things faster. The software can help increase your download speeds by using multiple connections simultaneously and you can even manage all your active downloads from a single window. You can pause and resume downloads without worrying about corrupting any files and even schedule downloads which can be particularly handy for you when you have to download large files and don't want the downloads to affect your internet usage. Moving on, there's a significant chance that some of the things you download will be delivered as compressed zip files. And while Windows File Explorer can open zip files natively, its functionality is kind of limited. Which is why you should get 7-Zip, another great open source software that offers a ton of useful features, including support for a variety of different formats, encryption for zip files, a great file manager, and more. You can get other similar software like pzip or winrar for the purpose, but I prefer using 7-Zip over the rest. Now that you have downloaded and unzipped the files, you will need to look them up on your system before you can use them, right? While on a Mac, you can do that quite easily with Spotlight or inside the Finder, Windows has no such utility, which is why you should get Uli, a similar software that will help you launch programs and open up specific folders, now visit a website and even search for things using your favorite search engine uh, using just your keyboard. Now, when I meant Windows has no such utility, what I meant was that Windows has no such utility that does it as efficiently as Spotlight does on a Mac. Right, so now let's uh, take a look at this. As you can see, I can press the default hotkey to open up a search bar, enter the URL of the website I want to visit and press enter. It's as simple as that. And the best part is that all of it is completely customizable. Pretty handy, right? Ear Trumpet is another great utility app that you should get right away. Wondering what it does? Well, it's a powerful volume control app that lets you change the volume of every individual app running on your system from a single pane something that Windows can't do natively. The default volume slider in the taskbar just lets you control the master volume of the system and Ear Trumpet replaces that with multiple sliders, depending on the number of apps open at any given moment. Next up is Plex, another handy app that 
helps organize all the media on your system in one easily accessible interface. With this, you'll never have to go on an endless hunt to find that one photo which is hidden somewhere on your system. It's, it's all right here. On top of that, Plex even allows you to stream files from your system onto any other device as long as you're using the same Plex account. But for that, you'll need to get its paid version. Rounding things off is France or France, a one-stop messaging client that lets you use almost all popular messaging services from a single window. It includes support for WhatsApp, Facebook, Messenger, Slack, Telegram, you name it. It's all right there. It even lets you add multiple accounts for the same service, which is kind of great if you have separate accounts for personal and professional use. And the best part, it's completely free to use. Well, that's it for today's video. As always, you can find links to all the software we have mentioned in the description below. And you might have noticed that all the software that we have mentioned, all the apps that we have mentioned, they are more or less free with paid options. So make sure you like the video if you've learned something new and uh, also share your favorite Windows tools with us in the comments below. We would love to know that. This is Abhijit signing off and I'll see you in the next one.